Hi. Now I'm. Back. Oh yeah. Okay. Hi, Ellen. We had to start the lawnmower outside right before. So sorry. Um, it's the glamour of life. Hot cake. It's so good to see you. It is good to see you too. Hush. There may be something in it for you after. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess we'll just kind of dive right in, if that's okay with you. Um, Please. I was wondering, um, you know, in this conversation about uh, the plant-based Mediterranean diet, if you could share a food memory of maybe a dish that transports you to the Mediterranean. Uh, well, um, I always want to do show and tell. So I was thinking about that, uh, and I was wondering, since we can't all gather in Italy, I put together a, like a little antipasto. Can I? Can we do show and tell? Yes, please. It's always a little terrifying to try and move the camera, but I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> Let's try. Okay, this is really something I put together 15 minutes ago, and it is everything that we love about Italy. It is everything we love about plant-based, white beans with rosemary, marinated eggplant, um, uh, marinated artichokes with mint, um, olives, roasted pepper, and we have to have some bruschetta. Mm -hmm. These cool. are flavors we love. Um, and, you know, I wish we were in Italy, but even if you're not, you can capture that. And so often the barriers to trying any new food are, eh, I don't know what to do with it. It's too expensive. And I don't know if it's gonna taste good. Maybe I won't like it. With the Mediterranean diet, there are no obstacles. These are basic foods we are all familiar with and love, whatever our cultural background is. Um, if you're looking for affordable, a bag of polenta, a box of pasta, these are things that have like, and a bag of beans. You can just like feed your whole family and maybe some people down the block too. Um, <laughs> and produce in season is not only gorgeous like this, it's so affordable and so vibrant and delicious. That looks great. And it looks like you had a lot of different textures on the plate, too, which I think is, is so, so delicious. I think so, too. Sometimes I think we forget how much mouthfeel, texture really matters um, in food. And you get all that with a Mediterranean diet. I mean, you've got sort of creamy beans. You've got some, some crunchies. Um, you've got some, some melty things. It's, it's yummy. And it doesn't have to just be Italy, you know, um, there are anywhere um, along the Mediterranean, each place has its own take on the Mediterranean diet. So you can do it wherever you are, just a matter of using the produce in season and basic whole ingredients, you know, whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, everything delicious. And in this case, everything plant-based. Nice. Uh, you know, we've been following your writing. You've been writing about food and diet for many years now. And so I was wondering if you could reflect on what some of the most successful messages have been and maybe what are some of the misconceptions around plant-based eating? Um, that it's complicated. Hmm. Look, we have all had it with complications. It's been mm -hmm. a very difficult year and a half. Um, and even on pre-pandemic, we were, you know, up to our adenoids. We didn't want to have to take anything on. That's one of the reasons I love the Mediterranean diet. I mean, we can and hope will get into all the health aspects of it. Mm -hmm. But it really is simple. We tend to complicate things. This is food we all know. So you don't have to stress about it. I like to avoid stress. Back to the basics, kind of. Yeah. Very nice. Someone said, um, you know, I shouldn't have to reinvent the wheel every night I'm in mm -hmm. dinner. You don't. Um, 
And, you know, with this antipasto plate, it is also going to be my dinner because all these components can be done ahead um, and you don't have to fuss. It's great. It looks like great picnic food too, like yeah. very portable. And, you know, you, you happen to know your stuff. The base <laughs> of the um, Mediterranean um, diet pyramid isn't even food. It's a way of life. It's how we how we act and interact. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so this, the, yeah, the people and the pleasures of the table. Yeah, That's so great. we forget Oops. that aspect of it. Um, I have often talked to people in Greece and in Italy and in France, and they say, we don't quite get the American approach to food where you just sort of eat it in bold. We forget mm -hmm. the whole conviviality of it. And I love that. Maybe during the pandemic, we came a little closer to rediscovering it because, you know, we didn't have soccer. We, uh, we didn't have anything else to get to. So we had to turn inward. And it's been very exciting, I think. That's a, that's a, sli a sliver of silver lining. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, traveling throughout the Mediterranean, I'm sure you've experienced like the most flavorful tomatoes, the most aromatic olive oil. Oh, um, yeah. So what would you plant in your ideal Mediterranean vegetable garden? About everything that is coming into season right now. You're right. Mm. Big, bodacious tomatoes, um, very sensual looking eggplant, um, always greens and herbs. I have my rosemary, which is like a bush, actually was a cutting from my friend's grandmother's rosemary from Italy. Um, so oh my gosh. you can transplant everything that makes the Mediterranean diet wonderful and make it work wherever you are. Mm, sounds so good. Speaking of which, um, could you share three staple ingredients in your plant-based pantry? Only three? <laughs> <laughs> um, I always, always have dried beans okay. and I always have canned beans too, because I live where there are hurricanes and sometimes you don't oh, have access to, um, power, but yes, beans, um, certainly being plant-based, they are a great source of protein. They oomph out a meal. So, you know, when people say, well, I, could, I couldn't just eat lettuce forever. Who wants to? I don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it, when I toss these beans with, say, some, some arugula and, and basil and a little olive oil, good olive oil also helps a lot. And whatever whole grain I've got a crush on at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm kind of into frica, which Ooh. is Middle Eastern, and it's smoky. So you don't even have to add a lot of spice. It's got that umami right in it. Yeah, and it has like an aroma about it too. Like you can yeah. smell it cooking. Yeah, my dog gets very excited when I make it. <laughs> so would you say that your that beans are the main source of protein for you or are there other protein foods that you gravitate towards? I love beans, but really there are so many protein sources in a plant-based diet. Uh, and where they're applicable to Mediterranean diet, nuts, seeds, even broccoli has trace amounts of it. We get a little obsessed with how much protein have you had? That's a question that just like, they keep giving it to, to vegans and we really do quite fine. There is protein in, if you have a balanced diet, you're good to go. Yeah, and even in the beans family, you know, there's lentils, there's uh, kidney beans, you know, there's different sizes, shapes, textures, colors. Right. So it never gets boring. Um, so for some of our viewers who might be new to plant-based eating, do you maybe have like one simple tip or suggestion to help them get started? Okay, so we were talking about pasta, certainly almost mm -hmm. everyone's favorite comfort food. Mm -hmm. um, try adding, ramping up the, the ratio of vegetables you add to it. So it's not just all pasta and sauce, maybe add some fresh, whatever your favorite vegetable is. And just 
I'm a big believer in the rule of one. If you start with one positive action, you're just going to find, yeah, I can do that. Let me, what else can I do? So I love doing that. I have, Sorry. it's not even a recipe. I had a, a <laughs> video I did with white beans like this, garlic, olive oil, and arugula. And my friend said, that is my favorite dish. You know, I could eat that every night. It is so simple, but it is so satisfying. Oh, that sounds so good. Um, we haven't talked that much about sustainability yet. Um, and I think that's such um, a great benefit of plant-based eating. So I was wondering if you could elaborate that, on that a little bit. Uh, it's huge. Um, and, you know, I went plant-based initially as a kid because I love animals. But living at ground zero for climate change, that's <laughs> um, the sustainability factor really matters a lot, too. And the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organ Organization says, if you want to make a difference, eating more plants is what's going to do it more than anything else you can do. It's less carbon, it's less um, water and land use, there's no weird runoff from livestock production. It's a much lighter way to live. And you do the earth a favor too. Yeah, and based on kind of the spread that you had laid out, there's really abundance. Um, you know, it's not it's not lack. There's really an abundance of plant foods that are available to choose from. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, if for some reason you don't love Italian food, which is, I think, the number one cuisine we all go to, there's a world of Middle Eastern, there's a world of rich, bodacious um, Spanish food, Greek food, and every region sort of has a different take on it. The Greeks use more olive oil, the Italians use more vegetables, and when you've got stuff like this, why wouldn't you? Um, the French have like a little more fruit. It's all delicious. You've got to find what you like. Yeah. Would you say um, you're optimistic? Like, do you see us moving in that direction um, towards more plant-based eating? Um, the fact that many, in fact, almost every restaurant I know is now offering a plant-based option. Boy, when I started, mm -hmm. this was not the case. So yeah, I am. I don't know if one of my friends said, you know, when I went vegan, I thought the world was going to go with me overnight. <laughs> I'm less optimistic about that. But I think if we lean a little more that way, mm -hmm. and when the food is this delicious, it's not like you get you get the reward. It's built in. I've heard um, like an expression, it's not about one person doing it perfectly. It's about hundreds of people doing it imperfectly and like taking those steps. That's great. I like that a lot. Um, so given the kind of, you know, maybe confusion or um, curiosity around different eating patterns and diet and nutrition, if you had one message to splash across the front page of the New York Times, what would it be? Try Mediterranean diet because, do I just lose in diet? Because it's the one everyone goes for. It's number one with so many organizations, right? Um, I think the FDA, um, American Dietetics Association. This is accessible, and that's what I want for people. That's great. And then, I guess, do you have any last messages for our audience before we let you go? Um, tons of Mediterranean diet recipes on Old Ways and on my website, Soulful Vegan. This is so important, and this is really a place where we can come together. 
because you know the best conversations happen over food. Exactly, I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll be sure to save this and please do visit uh, the Soulful Vegan and Ellen Canner site as well. So thank you everyone.